people are interested in other people and they want to know their lives and their stories. I am essentially a storyteller. Uh, you know, I don't write with a quill from an angel's wing. Words for me have to work hard. I line them up and I say, OK, fellas, we're going to work. And you know, some of you will have to tap dance and some of you will have to use a pick and shovel and some of you will have to do something else. But we're there to work and we're going to have to tell the story. We're going to tell it straight, we're going to tell it right, and we're going to start good. But we're not going to start making sentences jump up and down and weave in and out and be so beautiful that people go, wow, we didn't have a great sentence. That's not why we are here. We are here to tell a story. Now, the eternal story that everybody ever wants to hear from the dawn of time is, this is what happened. And it's always about the adventures of people. So I always write about the adventures of people, every kind of person I can think of, and their peculiar lives and their peculiar experiences, because it all comes back to us. It's all the rich tapestry of being alive. Is there a secret to uh, writing a successful family history? Yes, there is. And, and, and I'm aware that a lot of people would love to write their family histories and, and I'd love to show them how and, and, and perhaps I'll, I'll do a website one day or soon which will actually show you how to write your family memoir. But, but, but putting it, 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 it basically, first of all, you have to know the times. In other words, there is a, there is a historical knowledge you have to have beyond your own family. If you're going to write about your grandma, then you better know where she lived, how she lived, what the sayings were, what the religions were, what the factions were, was there racism, what, what kind of town was it, who was the mayor, was there any huge accidents, Does it, was there anything that happened to the community, so that you get the environment and, and you get the whole, what, what I call the take place, you get the take place right. Then you read as much, and, and I love old letters, for instance. If I can get old letters, they, they give me the dialogue that I need. And don't think that your grandmother spoke the way you do. She spoke quite differently, I promise you, or your grandfather. So you've got to get the syntax and the grammar right. And it's fun. It's, it's tremendous fun doing this research um, because you go into their lives, and when you come out of it, you know who you are. And, and, you know, there is the old adage, unless we know where we've been, we have no idea who we are or where we're going. So, so the point is that you're researching really yourself. It's just that it's a different part of yourself. It's that genetic part of yourself that created who you are. It's enormous fun to do. So don't think of it as a hard, oh, I can't do this, it's too hard. The research is so much fun. And then just make the words work. Just make them work. What if there's a skeleton in the cupboard and people? Oh, are lovely, 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 lovely! But what, what, if, what if people want to sort of airbrush certain things out of the story? Well, then, then you're cheating. You know, remember, we all have skeletons in our cupboards. I mean, if you shake any family cupboard, it rattles like hell, um, and that's the fun. I mean, if if if. if you, if you had a convict as an ancestor, well, I, I'd be very proud of that in actual fact, and lots of people are. But, but if there was a murderer, well, wow, gives you a plot, doesn't it? Uh, I'd love to find a murderer in my family. It'd be terrific. Um, no, 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 you must keep all the... You, you've got to keep the, the nasty stuff in as well as the good. Otherwise, what's the point? Whitewashing a family, whitewashing a story is no story at all. We're all... We're all it's the sum results of good, bad, indifference, stupidity, anxieties, health, um, alcoholism, bad habits, good habits, um, joy, anger. That, that's who human beings are. That has to be in your memoir. And most people try to write these lovely stories or they gloss over things as a slidey, slidey. We don't do slidey, slideys. We do the truth and the truth shall prevail. So you shouldn't leave anything out, basically? Absolutely not. If you do, you're cheating yourself because it makes it much richer if you put it in. And what, what, what's it to be ashamed of? I mean, if, if, if somebody in your background did something really nasty, well, this doesn't reflect on you, really. But, but it, it makes them human.
What if people are not particularly good writers, but they still want to write about their family history? Should they still do it? Honestly, this, there is so much nonsense talked about writing. You know, writing is something we can all do. And providing we, we follow the rules, we can make a fist of it. It's a bit like stupid versus intelligent. Uh, it, it's all about perceptions. But most of us can write, even if you are semi-literate. I mean, you can write. A Fortunate Life by Fosey is a man who is semi-literate, but the story is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love it. And, and so you just put it down. Don't be ashamed of what you are, because you can write, they're just words, they're there, they stand up there and say, let me work, let me work, put me to work, I want to work for you. You don't have to go, they're not waltzing around and they're not precocious. They don't stand there and say, oh no, I don't think I'll be a part of your book. Let's just for a moment get back to the mechanics yeah. of writing. Um, sentence construction, dialogue, that sort of thing. Now, you spent much of your early life in, in advertising. Did that help the way you eventually ended up as a writer, your, your style? Well, when I teach writing, the, first, the, the very first exercise we do is I give them, I will give the class, I'd say, for instance, now you've got 500 words and I want you to write about the most unforgettable character you've ever met. Uh, it's a Reader's Digest idea, I know, but, but it's, a, it's as good a title as any. The most unforgettable character, 500 words. Off you go, you've got half an hour. <laughs> and, and when they finish that, I say, every, OK, that's it. I mean, oh, and we didn't have enough time, we're just getting there. And that's, that's OK. Now, halve the words. You've got 10 minutes. Cut out all the adverbs, cut out all the adjectives. Every time you get and, put full stop. Uh, what I'm trying to teach is that words are thoughts. And you, you, they don't, they're not like, it's, they're like a string of beads. Each one of them is an identity in itself. So the full stop is the most important thing that you've got. And the shorter you can keep a sentence, the better. Now, if you... There are people who, who believe exactly the opposite, so I hasten to say, you'll hear for other people who are saying, but my, I, one of my sentences fills a whole page, and I say, well, that's a great pity, really. But they say, but it's beautiful writing. And I think, well, yeah, well okay. <laughs> so brevity is all important here. Pairing back is, is important. Cut, 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 and cut. I write 4,000 words a day. I would be hard put to use 1,500. Oh, so you're really cutting that much out? Yeah. yeah. In, in the final book. Because uh, just write it and then just chop it back until it has this nice, sharp, clean feel about it. You can hear it bouncing. It's lovely. Boom, boom, boom. 